Hey y'all, welcome to Camille's Kitchen. I hope you guys are ready for another Soul Food Sunday meal. I am gonna be doing a very tender chuck roast as well as some garlic mashed potatoes. Now, the full details to these recipes are in my new ebook, Southern Touch. Please check it out in the description box and we're gonna go ahead and get started with the chuck roast. Now, chuck roast is my favorite cut of beef to use in a pot roast because it has some nice marbling, it's nice and juicy and it can be very affordable. I have a three pound chuck rose and I'm gonna rub it down, okay? I'm gonna rub it down with some olive oil. I'm gonna season this generously with the steak seasoning, but y'all, this ain't nothing but some salt, pepper, and some garlic powder, okay? I just was trying to be, you know, make it easy today, but you want to season it very generously because it's a thick cut of meat, okay? And it really does take a lot of salt and a lot of seasoning to get that flavor up in there. You also want to make sure you get it on both sides as well as the edges. Once I do this, I actually like to let this sit at the side for at least 30 minutes to 45 minutes just so that that salt can really penetrate down into the meat and your meat is going to be at room temperature at that point. I'm going to melt some butter in a large skillet and then I am going to go ahead and place in my chuck roast. I just let it sit for about five minutes. And as you can see, it's nice and brown. Baby, that caramelization is gonna give it all the flavor you want. I'm gonna flip it to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing, let it rest for about five minutes. I'm gonna take this out of the pan and into this, I'm gonna put one chopped up onion as well as two stalks of celery that I've just cut big. Because it's gonna roast for so long, you don't need to dice it really small or anything like that. I'm gonna be putting in about five cloves of garlic right at the end, and I'm going to saute that for about 30 seconds. One cup of dry red wine, I'm using Marsala wine here, is going to add a great depth of flavor. However, if you don't do red wine, you could just add extra beef broth. Now, since I'm gonna be doing mine in the pressure cooker, I am gonna take my baby carrots and I'm gonna wrap them in foil because I wanna place them on top. However, in my ebook, I do have some instructions for how to do this dish in the oven. If you want to use large carrots, you can just peel them and cut them in half, and you can either wrap them or just place them on top. Now, I already have my chuck rose in my Instant Pot, and I'm gonna go in there with the wine, the veggies, and all those little seasonings, and then I'm gonna add in some pepper, rosemary, thyme, garlic powder, and onion powder. I'm using about a teaspoon of the pepper and the herbs and about half a tablespoon of the garlic powder and the onion powder. I'm also gonna add a bay leaf and you got to have the fresh herbs. Now the rosemary and thyme, that's just gonna really enhance the flavor and take it to the next level. And I also like to add one tablespoon of beef bouillon because I'm gonna add two cups of water. However, you could just use beef broth. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit and then I'm going to place my carrots right on top. I'm going to put on my Instant Pot lid and make sure the valve is um, set to sealing. I am gonna pressure cook this for 65 minutes. You wanna pressure cook it about 20 minutes per pound, but I just like that extra five minutes just to make it extra tender. And then I'm gonna natural pressure release for about 10 minutes. While that is cooking, I'm gonna get started on these garlic mashed potatoes. Now I have like 15 cloves of garlic and I'm gonna put them in a little saucepan and allow these to simmer with some rosemary and some thyme on the lowest heat setting for about 20 to 25 minutes. You want them really nice and tender. When I'm done, I'm gonna strain this, but I'm gonna keep that oil for other recipes. Now for my potatoes, I'm gonna use about three pounds of potatoes and I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons of salt. Go ahead and put them potatoes in there and you are going to cook these for about 20 to 25 minutes until they are nice and fork tender, okay? You wanna make sure you know they are nice and soft so that they will mash easy. Now they will peel fairly easily when they are cooked, so I just dump them and then give them a quick rinse and then I just peel them pretty quickly. Now you're gonna put in a lot of butter, okay? Y'all know in the South, we like butter, okay? So this is just the startup butter. I went in with about two tablespoons initially, then I added in all the garlic, about half of a cup of sour cream, about a fourth of a cup of heavy cream, about a fourth of a cup of milk. You know, I'm just kinda, I'm just kinda estimating, okay? Then I'm gonna put in some pepper and some salt, and I am going to begin to really mash this together well. 
Now, I also went in later and added about two tablespoons of cream cheese for some extra creaminess. But you really gonna have to work this, okay? Because these potatoes is thick. And you also want to break down the garlic cloves into the mash. Because it has been roasted for so long, the garlic really is going to have a nice mellow garlic flavor. It's not gonna be super in your face. I'm going in with the cream cheese and I'm just gonna keep working everything together until it is the taste that I want. Guys, you know, you can just adjust the creaminess, the pepper, the salt, all of that basically to your taste. Now I'm gonna put this in my baking dish and I'm going to smooth this out pretty well and I'm gonna dollop this with some more butter, okay? Now this is actually salted butter and for mashed potatoes, I really like to use, you know, a really good brand, okay? So I'm gonna go in with like this grass-fed butter from Costco. Now the best thing to do is to top this with some freshly shaved Parmesan, okay? But see, I didn't have that and I wasn't in the mood to do that, okay? So I just put on my Parmesan and then I'm gonna put this in the oven at 375 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now that my pot roast is done, I'm gonna go ahead in and fish out those carrots. And then I am gonna, I'm gonna take off some of this fat. Now, you know, I ain't afraid of fat. You know, fat is flavor, but it was a little greasy up in there. Okay, so I just skimmed off some of that. And then I took out my pot roast. Ooh, ooh, baby, look at this. Look at this, look at this. This chuck roast is just falling apart and tender. Okay, nice and tender. All right, that's what you're looking for. So I went ahead and took that out and I'm gonna thicken up this gravy with about two teaspoons of cornstarch and a little bit of water. And I like to add about two to three tablespoons of heavy cream for some nice creaminess. Now, as you can see, this chuck roast is just coming apart. I like to go ahead and just shred it a little bit so it can soak up all that gravy. And then my carrots, now I'm just gonna unwrap those and you're going to see that by wrapping the baby carrots, they're going to be super tender, but they are not going to be mushy and falling apart, okay, which is what I want. I know you can already see all of this deliciousness coming together. If you ain't smashed the like button by now, I don't know what you're doing, baby. I, I don't know what you're doing, baby. You, you late in the game, okay? Because this meal is so good. I'm going to add that chuck roast back to that gravy. Then I'm going to throw those carrots in. And I'll just let this saute for a minute or two just to let that gravy thicken up. Now at this point, the garlic mashed potatoes are ready. They are nice and golden brown. There the butter has just seeped into everything. Honey, are you going to try this? Okay, these garlic mashed potatoes were everything. Plus you have that delicious oil you can use for other recipes. Now I just paired this with some greens. You guys know how you have seen me make that so many times. You guys know I love you and Jesus loves you. And I'll see you next time in Camille's Kitchen. Goodbye.